In today's world, people operate from two different paradigms in relationship. Either they base their relationships on the foundation of compromise, or they base their relationships on the foundation of compatibility. To compromise is to settle a dispute or conflict, or to reach agreement or alignment by way of mutual concession. Remember that to concede is to yield, give up, or give away something that you value. To compromise by definition is to accept something that is lower than is desirable. In any relationship, there will be those times where you say, ooh, I want to eat Mexican food, and the other person says, I want to eat Chinese food, and you're like, okay, well, go get Chinese food. This is not genuine uh, compromise. The reason is, is because in that moment, you are not actually giving up anything that's valuable. You're not accepting something that is less than desirable, and so you are not going to feel pain. The reason you're not going to feel pain is because in that moment, you've genuinely decided that what's more important to you is that the other person feels good, or what's more important is that you're really hungry. It doesn't really matter where you go. These kinds of everyday concessions do not count for when I'm talking about basing your relationships on the concept of compromise. When we build the foundation of our relationships on compromise, we believe in compromise relative to the big things, the things where we really are giving up something valuable. The, the places where we are really conceding in a way that causes us to feel resentment or pain. But the problem here is that when you feel that pain as a result of compromising, you're not actually going to register it as a bad thing because you're going to register it as proof of how much you love the other person. And if you see the other person in pain because of compromising for your sake, you're going to feel loved. You're going to see that pain as proof that they care about you. Often, if people are particularly conflict-averse, they will give in and expect others to give in like this for the sake of maintaining harmony in the relationship. When you build a relationship on the foundation of and around the belief in compromise, you believe that while it's great to have compatibility, love and willpower can make most relationships work. This means that when it comes to the big things, such as what other people might consider serious incompatibilities, you truly believe that if a person loves you, and in order for them to be right and good, they must give in to some degree and take a little pain for the sake of the relationship and for the sake of your happiness. And you expect the same thing from yourself as well in reverse. There's a lot of give and take in your relationships. You may believe in meeting other people halfway. And you genuinely believe that compromise is necessary for a healthy partnership rather than having your own singular happiness at heart. You believe in mutual sacrifice. Compatibility, on the other hand, is when two things can exist in a state of harmony. They can be in the same space and not cause each other pain. In fact, they can enhance each other's well-being as they are. Incompatibility, of course, is when two things cannot coexist without that coexistence in the way that it is happening, being a detriment to either or both of them. I want you to remember that compatibility is not about sameness. That's a mistake that a lot of people make. Sameness could imply compatibility, but it could just as easily imply incompatibility. Compatibility at its foundation is about this philosophy of finding the right arrangement for the people in your life or putting them in the right place in your life according to their personal boundaries. Now remember that personal boundaries are whatever defines that person. Things like feelings, needs, desires, personality, behavior, personal truth, etc. According to your own boundaries, meaning your personal truth, your personal needs, your personal desires, your personality, um, your behaviors, your personal truth. Given those two things, those two boundaries, shall we call it, or definitions of self, how do we arrange these two things? In what relationship do we put them to each other so that it is a harmonious one instead of a detrimental one? Compatibility is about agreement and alignment being reached by finding a win-win scenario for both parties where neither must give something of value away or take pain for the other's sake. When you believe in compatibility, you don't believe in giving anything away that would result in yourself feeling pain or feeling resentment for anyone else. What this essentially means is you don't believe in mutual sacrifice. You don't believe that balance in a relationship is about meeting halfway. Instead, you believe that loving someone means making sure they are not in pain. And them loving you means making sure that you are not in pain, even if that means you cannot be with a person in a certain relationship arrangement because of it. 
Therefore, you also don't believe in having your own singular happiness at heart, but you don't believe in sacrificing your singular happiness for the sake of another person's happiness either. If you are basing your relationships on this foundation of compatibility, you believe in symbiosis, not in the concept of give and take. And you believe that to be good and right as a person, you need to be willing to look directly at incompatibilities and to find different arrangements that are a win-win so both parties don't have to sacrifice anything of value to either of them. When people build the foundation of their relationships on these different paradigms, meaning one person builds it on the paradigm of compromise, the other person builds it on the paradigm of compatibility, it spells absolute disaster in all kinds of relationships. I mean disaster between two partners, disaster between two siblings or two other family members, um, disaster between colleagues, disaster between friends. <laughs> it's a disaster in any dynamic that you look at. And this is where this gets kind of funny. And by funny, I mean like funny, not so funny. When two people are basing their relationships on these two different paradigms, they end up in a very repetitive pattern. Meaning that no matter what situation it is that you're looking at, if two people are basing their foundations of their relationships in these two different paradigms, the way that they feel will look the same. Here's how it's going to look. One person is going to feel like they're in a relationship with someone who only cares about themselves because that person expects them to accommodate and sacrifice and be in pain and oppose their own best interests for their sake. And the other person will feel like they are in a relationship with someone who only cares about themselves because they are totally unwilling to meet them halfway or concede or have to have it their way and are willing to end the relationship instead of give a little. For the sake of enhancing your understanding around this, I'm going to give you a concrete example. Tom and Melissa have been dating for three months, but they have decided to make this relationship a committed one. The problem is, is that Melissa and Tom both base the foundations of their relationships in these two different paradigms. Melissa bases her relationship in compromise, and Tom bases it in compatibility, and thus there is trouble in paradise. Melissa and Tom are having issues because Tom is a flirt with a very rich social life. At every opportunity, he meets up with his friends and attends social events. When he enters the room, he is the center of attention, and he's smiling and laughing and chatting everyone up. He's in full-blown entertainment mode. Melissa feels she may as well not even exist. Melissa is much more introverted. She wants a partner that wants to be with her one-on-one. -on -one. She doesn't want Tom to look at, much less talk to any other women. She is happiest when Tom is with her at her home with her dog and just having quiet, intimate time together. Because of this, the resentment and frustration between them is growing. Tom sees this as a very serious incompatibility, so he's been doing his very best to come up with a win-win. He's suggested things like this. Having two days a week where he is with Melissa at home, because after all, he would actually like to do that. Any more than that, though, and he would start to resent her, so he's unwilling to do that. She said no to that. He's thought about buying her an e-course to help her get over her social anxiety. He's thought about every possibility he can to make her experience when she's out socializing with him more of a positive experience for her. Of course, it hasn't been working. He's gotten so desperate that he even went to this place of maybe we should have an open relationship. And you can have a guy who's really introverted too, who likes to spend time with you at home, so we can still be in a romantic sexual relationship and be benefiting from each other, but... I won't have to be home with you and you won't have to be out with me. Of course, Melissa was like, no, I would just leave you and be with the other guy then. So we're at a point now where Tom has decided to tell Melissa, I'm really not sure that we're compatible at all. And I'm pretty sure we're not meant to be partners in a romantic sense. Tom feels like Melissa wants him to prove how much he loves her by choosing to give up what makes him happy for what makes her happy. The fact that she would feel pleasure as a result of him giving up something important to him makes Tom distrust her and question whether she is a good woman or whether she is emotionally dangerous. Melissa, on the other hand, cannot believe what she is hearing. She's pretty convinced that she's waking up to the fact that she's in a relationship with a narcissist. After all, he's completely unflexible and totally unwilling to compromise. He's a my way or the highway kind of guy. By the way, She's totally convinced he's never going to be able to have a real relationship being this way. 
Melissa does not understand why it is so hard for Tom to just meet in the middle. Her idea is that half of the week she can put up with him going out as long as he doesn't flirt with or talk to other women. And the other half of the week, he can be home with her. To her, this seems like how to meet in the middle and have a great relationship. At least one that's good. And you know what? What makes Melissa super furious is that, unlike Tom, she's made these kinds of concessions all along the course of their relationship. For example, she's left her dog at home and joined him in his social activities, even though she hates doing that. She's made him food a bunch of times when she didn't really feel like it, just so that he could feel good. She didn't see her family on Christmas because she gave into going to his parents' place instead. To her, this is feeling like a one-way relationship where the whole universe revolves around Tom and where everyone else is expected to concede, but he never will. On top of this, Melissa firmly believes that a good guy definitely doesn't talk to other women when they're at social gatherings, definitely does not flirt, and certainly doesn't ignore their girlfriend when they're out on the town. So she's completely convinced he needs to heal out of his behavior. Tom and Melissa are operating out of two completely different relationship paradigms. Tom actually has no idea that Melissa has been compromising so much in the relationship. He has put his faith in the idea that if she says yes to something, she actually feels good about it. So he doesn't need to do anything else. It's a win-win when it really hasn't been. If Tom did know this, he wouldn't be okay with it because it's not actually what he expects. And guess what? Because to Melissa, she's so convinced that it's obvious standard knowledge that the way to make a relationship work is compromise. She has no idea that Tom doesn't even believe in compromise. She has no idea that he's already made a decision, that he's gonna walk through the world not giving up anything that's important to him, not making concessions when it's gonna lead to pain. And so she's likely to continue having this experience with him. If she knew that he did not believe in compromise, she'd probably be rethinking their entire relationship. One thing is for certain, it is an absolute waste of time arguing over the specifics of the conflict they are having around their social lives when the real issue is that they don't even operate from the same relationship paradigm and therefore are looking in two totally different directions for the solution. Tom is looking for some arrangement where he can stay the way he is and she can be the way that she is and it's compatible. And Melissa is looking for a compromise. In conflicts that have their roots in this dynamic, where one person is basing their relationship on this concept of compromise and the other is basing it on the concept of um, compatibility, oftentimes the person who is basing their relationships on compromise will come across more codependent, whereas the person who is basing their relationship on this foundation of compatibility will come across more narcissistic. That being said, it's really important to separate out these relational styles of codependency and narcissism, so we call it, from this relationship paradigm dynamic of basing your relationships on either compromise or compatibility. One of the big reasons for this need to separate these things out is because in these relationship dynamics, when they get really difficult, it can be quite easy to decide that somebody's being codependent or decide that somebody's being narcissistic, but it's really not that. It's that they're operating from this sort of belief pattern that they hold around relationships. They may or may not be codependent or narcissistic. In other words, a person could very well fit into the pattern of being codependent in their relationship style or narcissistic in their relationship style and fit into either of these patterns. But also a person could fit into neither of them and still adhere to either one of these paradigms. If you're curious to learn what I think about compromise and compatibility in relationships, you might want to watch two of my videos. The first titled, Why You Should Never Make Compromises in a Relationship, and the second titled, Compatibility, A Harsh Reality in Relationships. If it seems like you're in a relationship, especially a conflict, where somebody is basing their relationship on a totally different paradigm than you are, what's really important is to stop that conversation around the specifics of the conflict you are having and to switch your focus, attention, and conversation to the fact that you are coming at relationships from a completely different paradigm.
One of you believes in compromise and the other doesn't, and so you are pulling in different directions for a solution, thereby only enhancing the feeling of unworkability on both sides. When this happens, it's time to examine and question your own relationship paradigms as well as the other person's, so as to consciously arrive at a relationship paradigm you can stand for, of course, hopefully together. It is so important to get into the same relationship paradigm with your partner. If you don't do this, all of your conversations, all of these conflicts are going to end up fruitless because ultimately you have a totally different idea of what you're aiming for. You're looking for solutions in two drastically different decisions. And in fact, you're looking for the opposite thing. That's not going to go anywhere. Some of you already know the pain in a relationship of what it is like to unknowingly fight for two different outcomes. For this reason, it is crazy important to recognize what paradigm in relationships somebody is operating from when they enter into conflict with you. That being said, can you recognize which relationship paradigm you fit into? Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and consider sharing this video with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified of the next time that I post a video. I want to thank you personally for the bravery that you have to step into awareness. I'll see you in the next video.